The 2024 World Championships have finally concluded, and while we had some really strong returning threats like Iron Hands and Fluttermane making a really strong name for themselves, we had a lot of other new Pokemon making their first debut, such as Ogre Pond and Calyrex Ice, that are doing really well in the format for Scarlet and Violet despite having not been legal last year. And we had a pretty interesting top cut because of this. If you're interested in learning about how this world's went, of course, make sure to like and subscribe for more, as I'll probably be talking about a lot of other Regulation G as the format does return next year for early 2025. And we have plenty of other content for VGC in general coming up soon. Also consider subscribing if you just enjoy the content in general here, even if it's not Reg G related, as we upload a ton of VG content. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can even hit the join button. With that said though, let me know your favorite team we go over today, as there are going to be a lot of really cool teams. Obviously, we have 106 that were just in day two alone, and we have some other really cool teams that I'm going to go over in general that had some pretty strong performances, albeit they didn't necessarily end up making day two. So with that all out of the way, of course, let's get into what actually ended up doing well this year and what you might want to expect for the next time we get Reg G. All right, so right off the bat, I do have a couple different sites that I'll probably, I might go back and forth between, I'm not sure. I'll link them both down below either way. Uh, the first one is going to be this uh, standing site for uh, stallruth.dev, which essentially is going to go over the entire world's like ranking all the way from top to bottom. Uh, this also in tandem with that has some other useful things such as the fact that it's not limited to just top cut, which is really cool because there are definitely some people who uh, made it out of made top cut or they may not have even made day two. They had some really interesting teams I do want to highlight because I think that well, obviously, I mean, we can look at the team that won and go over, you know, how that's going to impact. I think a lot of people know how Maradam will carry over into future Reg G formats or even like dual restricted at this point. Uh, but I think there are a lot of other interesting picks that either just missed day two that had some serious implications going forward or a lot of archetypes that maybe if you're not super sweating the post NASC format might have been surprising and we can go over all of it today. Starting off, of course, uh, I do want to really quickly highlight the team, of course, that won Worlds this year, which is Luca Cerebelli's team. Uh, this team, of course, features Moridon, Ogre Pond, Hearthflame, Rashifu Rapid, Iron Hands, Farigaraf, and of course, Whimsicott. Now, I will say uh, really quickly, actually, let me let me give this its own window because I do think that that is going to be at least a little bit better for when I go through the teams themselves. Uh, we do have, obviously, six pretty potent Pokemon and five of which of these were pretty standard on Moridon. Actually, four of these, I should say, were pretty standard on Moridon comps. Uh, if you looked into the post NASC tour format, especially for these online tournaments, you would be pretty familiar with the fact that Ogre Pond Hearthflame and Urshifu Rapid are definitely newer additions to this team. But in previous formats, you well, at least in a previous Reg G, I should say, you would see things like Blood Moon, Ursa Luna. And then usually that sixth spot was for something really just kind of whatever for this team, whether it was like an Incineroar, a Chiyu, uh, it was sometimes Ogre Pond to be fair, though it would occasionally be more so like the Quarterstone Ogre Pond instead. Uh, there were a lot of different picks for that sixth spot. But the bear was definitely different. It usually was Blood Moon or Saluna here. And it did pretty well. I mean, that was a pretty standard Baradon comp for a while. Uh, and in general, I mean, Baradon was pretty terrifying at a comp like this. Uh, since the post NIC format, though, we've seen additions such as Terra Water for a graph, which is more for that Ice Rider matchup, as it is definitely a lot better suited to Ice Rider check when it is not weak to Glacial Lance. And other things such as, of course, the Whimsicott just... I guess, I think it's Terra Dark Whimsicott is the new change. I don't, I think they were Terra Ghost beforehand or Terra Ground even on some comps from what I remember. Uh, though the most notable one, if you have not played in Reg G since NASC, probably the biggest change on here by far is the fact that Moradon is actually no longer going Terra Electric. Now this is a pretty big change in the post NIC format. Uh, Moradon's actually opted for Terra Fairy. This is for a few different things, such as the 50-50 into Moridon and Raging Bolt matchups, as you go from being a Pokemon that is very weak to the Dragon Stab to now having a complete immunity to it. And Dazzling Gleam is also a very splashable option in this format. It's great into things like Moridon, Raging Bolt, Coridon. Uh, there's also just a lot of Pokemon that aren't necessarily resisting Fairy. And realistically, if you're not tearing into it, there are very select few Pokemon, since two of our top tier five types are both neutral to Fairy, such as Incineroar and Chiyu. Uh, we don't really have that great set of steel types outside of, I guess, Terra and then like Goldengo. We don't really have any great poisons outside of Terra. So when you start to think about that, I mean, Fairy is a very clickable stat here. I mean, the only, the, the most noteworthy fire type, for example, is Ogre Pond Hearthflame, which is on this team as well. Uh, that's a pretty recent addition to just, I guess, a lot of teams. Ogre Pond Hearthflame has since started rivaling Cornerstone again as the top tier Ogre Pond form. Uh, and for good reason. This is a really good killer to a lot of different things like Ice Rider for this matchup. It's also just really good into a lot of different Terra Grass options or just non-Terra Fire and Water types in general. And Ogre Pond also just gives this team redirection, which it didn't have the best form of that before, so that's a pretty good addition. And it, it puts a lot of pressure on Pokemon like Rillaboom too. 
if you're looking at this team though and you haven't played a lot of rank g one thing that might surprise you is seeing terra bug being on the world championship team uh if you made a bingo board for what terra type would be on the bingo well, on the world championship team i could probably bet that 90 percent of you guys watching this would have never guessed terra bug was on any of these six pokemon frankly or really on any six pokemon in any world championship winning team uh but terra bug i actually had to reach out to my good pal the flying bird to ask about why this was a thing uh, apparently it was because of the fact that it is a ground resisted type that also does not make you weak to ice rider uh since terra grass and flying would both do that terra bug does not do that which is a pretty big deal actually because iron hands is meant to be an ice rider track uh, specifically, the, the thing is, is because high horsepower would be a lot more clickable in the Iron Hands, so Terra Bug does actually force the legitimate 50-50 in that case. Since you still now become a ground resistance, but you don't then suddenly make yourself weak to Glacial Lance, which a lot of other partners on this team, like Maridon, are weak to it. Uh, so it's a pretty good addition for this team, obviously, uh, especially since this Iron Hands is meant to underpace in Trickery matchup. Uh, another thing as well. A lot of Iron Hands have now started running Low Kick instead of Heavy Slam, uh, mostly just to help check things like Ice Rider for a more immediate damage set. Uh, we'll go through some other teams too that even opted for like Sword Stance plus Low Kick as a really good stab. Uh, there are some players like Sidrun Park who did run this. Uh, Sidrun actually ran a really, really insane Iron Hands, which I'll get into in a bit because it's on one of the more unique not day two teams that we're going to cover. Uh, but regardless, so, uh, this is the team that ended up winning Worlds. It's a pretty powerful team, in my opinion. Uh, I could definitely see this becoming a staple in Reg G going forward. But we do have some other teams that ended up doing pretty well at this event. Uh, one of the other ones... Uh, sorry, I went a little... There we go. Okay, here we go. So one of the other ones that ended up doing pretty well, uh, obviously we do have the World second place team. Uh, which is going to be Yuta Ishigaki's team. Uh, this team consists of Iron Valiant, Ice Rider Calyrex, Scarf Lando I, which is pretty cool. We have not seen a lot of Lando I in this format, so the Scarf set is interesting, as it still allows you to check Maradon viably. Uh, and it also gives you good pivot too, which we don't have a lot of good fast pivots in this format outside of Maradon. So a fast pivot that can like outpace it, and then on top of that as well, you just tear goes for the Fake Out immunity if they're not leading with Maradon, but instead they just have a viable Fake Out Mon like instantly you still need the pressure. Uh, on top of this as well, we see like a Life Orb Pelipper that's not Stellar, which typically the Life Orb sets you do see Stellar. Uh, so having a Terra Grass instead uh, is a pretty cool addition here. It helps with like a Raging Bullet resistance for Thunderclap, which is cool. Uh, we have Sasha Shifu, which has become the staple of Shifu. It's no longer Scarf, uh, which a lot of the earlier format was Scarf. I know Sasha is still very viable, but it's pretty now consistently just Sasha Shifu Rapid. Uh, the Valiant, though, is the cool part of this team, because obviously a lot of these Pokemon are pretty weak to Maradon. Uh, for example, the, the Ground Tip is a pretty frail option that just dies to Draco immediately. Uh, most of these Pokemon just die to Draco, in fact. So having a very fast fairy that can both weaken Maradon, but also take advantage of its terrain is a pretty big deal, since Calyrex does typically need the Maradon checked, as it can do serious damage with Electro Drift, especially on those Terra Electric sets, which, while they have fallen off a bit, they're still really good in the format. Which, again, if you look at this team, really, besides the Moongus and, like, Landorus, what's actually taking the Electric Stab here? And it probably just Oko's that entire last three on that right side, barring Terra. So having the Valiant just as a nice option that can take advantage of it without needing the Terra necessarily, it can weaken it for that partner spot. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, Dual Wide Guard is also really nice, as, again, still a lot of good spread in Reg G. It's probably one of the biggest support moves you could be running right now, up there with, like, Follow Me in terms of importance, I would argue, or, like, Rage Powder, just because of how common spread is in this format, with things like Rock Slide, Precipice Blades and Origin Pulse are spread, though Precipice Blades is not really super noteworthy. Uh, the Calyrex moves are spread. Uh, Maradon still runs both uh, Dazzling Gleam and Discharge, depending on the team. There are a lot of good spread moves. Uh, I can keep going on and on. Frankly, I can make a whole five-minute ramble on good spread moves in this format. Uh, but the team is really cool. I think this is a lot more unique of a team, obviously, but it's something that you would expect to see out of Japan because, uh, obviously, if you look at a lot of these Japan Nationals teams, they're a lot different from what we find in the U.S., European regions, etc. And Valiant, I know, did place really well in a lot of Japan Nationals teams. I think it was either second or first in Nationals for Japan. I know it placed high. I'm just forgetting the specific placement. Uh, so either way, seeing the Valiant is not super surprising, but it's it's not something you would really expect to see if it wasn't a Japanese player, just because of how their their system went and how their, their placements went. Valiant did place high, just like if you saw Lunala place and you saw it, you would probably assume it's on a Japanese team because a lot of the Japanese player base has seemed to gravitate towards Lunala as a really good restriction. Uh, speaking of Luna, we should probably, now that we've talked about the finals, let's talk about what actually went really well restriction-wise. So speaking of other restricted options, obviously, I mean, we have a lot of Maradon and Ice Rider in this top cut. 
Uh, but some other interesting things to note, um, I'll, I'm gonna put a star next to any of these. Uh, so obviously we have the Zama's into Crown is a pretty cool noteworthy one. Uh, Zama Crown was really good into Ice Rider, obviously, in case if you haven't been keeping up with the format. Uh, we also, Tarapagos is another interesting restricted. Uh, Tarapagos was a pretty good option at like the early Reg G, but it definitely fell off post NISC. A lot of players were starting to run more offensive options, like for example, Maridon picked up a lot post NISC, though it was already a really terrifying mod to begin with. We also saw a lot of Calyrex Shadow Rider, and the specs Tarapagos definitely fell off a bit because Calm Mind is better for that Shadow Rider matchup. But at the same time, Calm Mind takes a while to get set up, so it's kind of a 50 50 where the best Tarapagos to check Calyrex Shadow, which was kind of like the, the mod that a lot of people thought would be doing really well at Worlds, if not winning Worlds ended up being a mon that was a lot worse suited for a lot of the other top tier restricteds. So because Calm Mind Turtle was a lot harder to set up, or at least it had a lot more counterplay at this current point in the format, as opposed to early on where it was the better option to run, uh, because of that, we didn't see a lot of Tropagos at Worlds, though the ones that did place were all very different from what I would have personally expected. Uh, for example, this team that I started in 8th is a pretty interesting option. It's a lot more aggressive than you see these Tropagos teams go. Uh, it runs options like Pow on this team, for example, and Earth Super Rapid. And while Urshifu Rapid was a common partner, uh, you would typically see that power spot for more of like a support mod like a fairy or even like a Comfe was occasionally ran at times on this team. Uh, the non fluttering power picks were pretty common for these Combine Turtle teams, but it's interesting to see Pow. I don't think I've actually seen a Combine Turtle team ever run Pow, so having it here as a nice means of just applying some more physical damage and giving that uh, Pow Rapid food line some serious offensive merit here is pretty cool. It also, obviously, it's a good partner for Rillaboom, to be fair. And Rillaboom is, like, one of the best mods right now in the format, I would argue. Uh, shockingly, the first Calyrex Shadow Rider team is actually ninth. Uh, if you asked a lot of people pre-Worlds what they thought would win, I'm sure most people would have assumed it was Shadow Rider. I think a lot of people expected Shadow Rider to get the repeat win, just like he did in 2022. Uh, shockingly, its best placement was ninth. And not only that, but its best placement was with Don Dozo, which... Uh, this team is really cool, actually. I was kind of keyed onto this a couple of weeks before World started, where people were running like Shadow Rider, Mousehold, Weezing Galar, Iron Hands, and then Dose of Theory. Uh, and then I learned even more about like kind of why that was the case uh, from a Talent VGC vid, uh, which went over like a lot of different teams. If you if you are curious about like a lot of different teams that might have ended up showing up, I'm going to kind of breeze through them, but I'll link a more specific vid down below as that's how I'm a lot. That's, that's how I got a lot of my information for this. I watched the Talent VGC vid regarding like what would be noteworthy at Worlds this year. So I'll, I'll link that below. I think it was a really good resource and helped familiarize me a lot more with this, helped my understanding of Top Cut as well, but I don't want to rehash this video either. Uh, so I'll link that below just in case. I'll put an annotation here as well. Uh, but basically though, uh, essentially this comp plays pretty interesting. I'll actually pull up the full team just specifically because uh, I do think it'll be kind of helpful as a reference here. But essentially though, uh, it's Cavalier Shadow Rider. Uh, they typically have been going specs, but obviously on Justin Knox's team, it's Terradormal Life Orb for that Shadow Rider mirror. Uh, and then you have the Tatsugiri, which again, typically it was running Coward and Mirror Coat, but having the Helping Hand Terra Stellar and just leading Dual Stab is certainly good. Uh, it gives Toxigiri a lot more of an offensive presence, and with the Focus Ash, you do have that guaranteed turn to live, which is still nice, especially if you are going to lean into Terra Stellar plus Stabs, as Draco and Muddy Water are both really powerful options. Uh, Weezing Galar here, though, is the poison of choice. This is for a few reasons. One, your Calyrex is immune to neutralizing gas, so depending on your opponent's restricted, they might get kind of screwed by that. Meanwhile, you do still have T-Spikes, and you still have a good Fairy Spread move, too, which into a Dragon-heavy format, that's a pretty big deal. And then Dozo Gear, you can kind of just outstall and win because they do obviously have options like Protect as well as the Droopy Tatsugiri leaning into Body Press so it doesn't even mind Intimidate. Meanwhile, you still have Unaware to ignore opponents setting up offensively or even just their Calyrex is being good. Uh, it was a pretty good call. And then the Rock Tomb on Rapid Foo is mostly just for Speed Control because you really just need the other three. Uh, this isn't a team that really cares about removing its own terrain since you do have Indeedy plus Calyrex so you don't really need a move like Ice Spinner though it's not the worst option obviously. This seems also just not super weak to Rillaboom, since you do have options like Weezing, you have your own Indeedee, which will probably, if I had to guess, this is probably really slow Indeedee. Uh, technically, I don't actually know what nature the Indeedee is running. I can't imagine it's fast, though, since it is a trick room route for giving things like uh, Solo Dozo, for example, some Mare, or even just Fighting Tailwind Mirror. There's a lot that can really be done with this team. It's a very 2-2-2 style team, since you do have the Psy Spam, you have the Dozagiri, and then you have just the fillers. To be fair, these are more just like fillers that kind of fit on both modes. Um, but either way, though, it's a really cool team nonetheless. It's not like literal 2-2-2, technically. I think it's actually more 4-2, uh, since it's kind of like you just run these two always with whatever other two you're running. So it's more like 4-2. 
But regardless, though, it is a really cool team. I think that there are a lot of other variations of this uh, that I can highlight. For example, uh, other Weezing Galler teams were... Uh, it'll actually just take me a second, because a lot of the other ones didn't play super well. But if we had to look... Is there a way to search? There's not a way to search the mods. Um, what, I can actually go to this, to be fair, because there are ways to find Weezing Galler on here. Because I know I'm placed on a couple different teams. Um, as far as the... Here we go, Weezing Galler. So there were a few different teams that did run this. Uh, obviously, we have a Kyogre team. Oh, actually, hold on. It's, not, it's out of range. So we have a Kyogre team running it. Uh, this one's a little bit more unique, but the other teams are all those are related. And they're all on Chatter Rider teams as well. Uh, we see, for example, the Chuppa Cross team is like the literal 2 2 version of it, though it doesn't have the mouse hold. It has some DD instead. Uh, we have the Juan Jose team, which opts for Mian Chao over Iron Hand. So that's still like a really good pick. I think it's more for wide guard matchup. Uh, and then we have the Giacomo pa Pacelli team, which has the Chiu over the uh, Mouse Hold or DD, just to lean more into Calyrex damage, which is totally fair. Uh, so there's some like different variations of it, but it does kind of like basically play the same team uh, uh, just as a whole. The, the general point is more find four Pokemon and then throw Jizugiri on it, and the four Pokemon happen to build around Shadow Rider comps in that sense. So it's a really cool team nonetheless. Uh, it has a lot of different merit, and it popped up a lot. I mean, a lot of them made day two. As you can see there, like four of them made day two. Uh, though there were a lot that also kind of bubbled into five and three, but it was a cool team nonetheless uh, that popped up. And it's something that again, if you weren't really familiar with the pre-worlds format, well, I should say the post-worlds format, like you probably weren't thinking that that would be a comp, especially with how little G Weezing popped up before worlds. Like seeing five of them make day two is a pretty insane thing. Uh, the best like standard pre uh, worlds Calyrex Shadow team that ended up placing was the tenth place team. This is kind of like how the NASC Calyrexes were. Uh, you might have seen like a Thundee Eye over the Raging Bolt spot, but it was basically that same sort of comp uh, placed at tenth. And we see a lot more of these standard Calyrex Shadows in the rest of top thirty two. Like again, eleventh uh, place was another standard Calyrex Shadow team. Uh, if we go down a bit, we could start to see a lot more like. Like, this, Shohei's team was basically just uh, same five, but it throws a Moongus on. We see this one, which is just for Rig, for a uh, certain unnamed world champion from 2016, uh, etc. We we can kind of go through. Like, like, a lot of these are a lot more standard comps for Shadow Rider. Uh, other interesting picks, though, for Restricteds, we do have some more Sama. Our first Kyogre team actually placed at 14th. Uh, this was a really cool team. I, I saw it going really far. It was the literal round one on stream, I believe. Uh, consists of leftovers called Mind Kyogre, which opted to be the best Kyogre set as the post Worlds format. They stopped running the Specs and Scarf and just leaning into more Calm Mind as the setup. AV was still kind of relevant, but a uh, Calm Mind definitely picked up a lot more in online tours again a couple weeks before Worlds. This particular team opts for Roaring Moon, which I thought kind of just fell off the face of the earth, but obviously Roaring Moon does still have some serious merit. It's one of the fastest non pranks or tailwind mons, which is pretty cool. And on top of it as well, I mean, Terrifying Acro is a really good way to handle a lot of different Kyogre checks. Uh, for example, it's great into Rillaboom, and it's also great into Amoongus. Uh, it's decent into the Ogre Pond forms, especially Wellspring, which could definitely wall this Kyogre very easily. Uh, though, it also puts up some serious pressure into things like Rapid Fu and Incineroar. So, like, this team has a decent Wellspring weakness, especially to pre Terra Wellspring. And having a mod like Roaring Moon that can do some serious damage without relying on things like Bleak Wind Storm for this team is pretty cool. Though, a Tornadus could have definitely slotted on this team, and I wouldn't have been too surprised. Uh, though, I, I do like the Roaring Moon here, nonetheless. It also just gives a lot of things like knockoff utility for the team, uh, especially for removing helmets for Urshifu Rapid. So, there is some serious merit to having the Roaring Moon. And I mean, having a dragon is never a bad thing in a format like this. Even if it's not running a stab, it's just a good defensive typing to have. And it improves it really well. So, I, I do kind of vibe with the pick for sure. Uh, some other options that obviously did pretty good in this tournament. For restricted um we have let's see actually is, are there any other oh right yeah literally uh 19th we we have our first zossian i believe um there might have been a zossian slightly higher i don't think there was though uh but grant weldon ended up running zossian and it's a ditto zossian team too actually which is pretty cool there's a lot of interesting picks like uh taragos reggie drago for example uh it's a decent chiu team too uh typically when i've seen zossian in the past it's been like the umbreon rillaboom team that ran on Tailwind with Zacian, and it was a really cool team. I know that placed really well at NASC. Uh, this one opts for Ditto with like Reggie Trago, since I mean, Zacian probably is like still the best fairy killer in the format. It okay, let me rephrase it's probably the strongest fairy killer in the format. It's probably not the best one because it is only one per team. Uh, though I think that Zacian, and this is kind of where I want to go into my first like prediction for whatever happens for 2025 VGC. 
I think Zacian will definitely pick up a lot more. We're going to see a lot more of these like Tailwind comps. Uh, I can see Ditto still popping up on them, but I think it'll typically be a lot higher usage for Zacian going into future formats. Since with Dual Restricted, Zacian becomes a lot less of a liability. Uh, having to run a Restricted that can get very easily stopped by Incineroar is one thing right now. But a lot of people have started to fall off on Incineroar. Even just as a non-restricted pick, it was like the literal fifth most used. And Incin didn't even make finals this year, which I'm sure a lot of people thought it would have. Obviously, Incin, for the record, is still a very strong Pokemon. You really can't go wrong with running Incin on any given team, and your team will probably at least be an average at worst team with Incin on it, unless you're running a really bad moveset like, I guess, Plot Incineroar or something like that. Uh, but it's pretty hard to make a bad team with Incineroar on it, in my opinion, though you could try. Uh, the support it offers is really good. It matches up really well on things like Shadow Rider still. It has some decent pickup pressure for non reg teams. But I think that, uh, obviously with Incin usage going down in favor of other fire types like Chiyu and Ogre Pond, having the second restricted spot being a little less of a liability since you no longer are just screwed by Intimidate if it leads against your Zacian, uh, you could definitely get a lot more merit out of running a Zacian going forward, and partnering with mons like Caloric Shadow Rider and Marida will actually be like a seriously big deal, because Zacian does benefit both of those very well. It's a great killer for a lot of different dark types that would pressure Caloric Shadow, and since you do have Caloric Shadow as some decent offensive snowballing, you can be a little bit more reckless with the Zacian and just kind of use it to pressure Incin, maybe force a Terra into a non Calyrex check. Uh, or you can use it with Maridon, for example, to pressure other Maridon, since if they go Terra Fairy, they're weak to your steel moves like Behemoth Blade. And if they don't Terra, I mean, you're, you're still going to be pretty weak to options like Player Elf, or even in this case, Terra Ground, which is really cool, since it also does provide you with an outright Maridon immunity to the Electric Stab. So... I think Zacian will actually pick up a lot more. Uh, the worst placement here was still top 24, which means it did make the bracket since that was out of 24. Uh, so that's a really big deal for Zacian, obviously. And again, I think that next world, we will see a lot more of them. Uh, it's a really good partner for like every restricted besides maybe Kyogre, I guess, just because Kyogre technically has like two or three better restricteds that it would partner with. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, it's probably like the best or the second best partner for every other good restricted. But uh, I guess Tropagos too. It doesn't really benefit Tropagos. But it, it's great next to Maridon, and it's probably only outclassed by Kali Shadow. Or Kali Shadow, it's really, really probably the best partner you could be running for Kali Shadow matchup. Uh, you can maybe make a case that Zamazenta would probably be slightly better for it. Uh, it has a case to be ran next to Zamazenta if Groudon picks up. Otherwise, I don't really see it. Uh, it's decent enough next to Groudon just as a blanket good Pokemon, but you would probably run like more Rhydon or Shadow Rider over that. Uh, it, it has a lot of merit though next to like any relevant restricted, I would argue. And at worst, it's probably the third best option you could be throwing on just because it has such good offensive pressure. Uh, you would probably want to partner with a really good instant killer though. Uh, but there are some decent options though. I mean, Iron Hands has picked up a lot. So again, if you were to run like Mervide on Zacian Iron Hands, like that could probably cook any ints in your fighting. And then you just backline clean with Zacian, and, or you could just use it to pressure the opposing Mervide on that would take advantage of your own terrain being up and then just kind of prosper. Like, like you could really do a lot with Zacian. I think that going into a post world format, it will have a lot more of a place, especially when two restricted picks up. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of wanted to highlight Zacian. I think that this world, it's underrepresentation makes a lot of sense, but I think that in a future world format, we will see it pick up a lot more. Uh, for other things that are pretty noteworthy, though, obviously, I mean, we do have the Zamazentas. Uh, there are a few of them. This is the one that will snowball in next world. Uh, it is still the best wide guard Pokemon of the format, besides, like, maybe Pelipper could give it a serious case for its money. But Zamazenta is still a really decent wide guard option. It's still great for iron defensing next to Calyrex or opposing for Calyrex. Uh, Zamazenta will probably be the... I would personally say it's probably the best second restricted going into next worlds. Uh, you really can't throw this onto any team and have it be like a bad team, I would argue, unless... I'm actually trying to think of a restricted this doesn't partner well with, and I guess the best one unironically would probably be Saucian, because it's a great partner for Maridon, since you could wide guard and get a complete immunity to discharge, and then also you could still bully a lot of things like Ice Rider for it, so you don't need to lean as heavily into Electric Terra. Uh, it's a great partner for for uh, Calyrex Shadow because it probably is one of the best just defensive checks to Incin. And it also destroys a lot of other faster checks like Chiyu with Terra Dragon, for example. You could really bully Chiyu. Uh, it's great for Ice Rider in case it tries to set up Trick Room since even if it does get the Trick Room up, Azama can really just invalidate Ice Rider at times. Uh, it's really good next to Ice Rider too for the mirror into either Calyrex. Uh, it's really good with a lot of other restrictions, even stuff like Kyogre and Groudon it has some decent merit with. I would personally argue at least. Uh, so, so you really can do a lot with Zamazenta. 
And I think going to next world, like this is the restricted that we'll seriously pick up. Uh, obviously, I mean, we're gonna still see a lot of things like Tropagos. Uh, well, actually, Tropagos will probably fall off. Uh, we do see some Tropagos at least placing here. Uh, I, as I said, the best one was still in top eight. Uh, that literal 8th place, but we're not going to see Tarapagos really in Next World. That's the one thing I can be pretty certain of. If we see Tarapagos even like Day 2 at Next World, I would actually be really surprised. You would probably need a very specific comp to make that mon work in a dual restricted since Amazenta uses dual spike with wide guard going up for it. And not only that, but it's a lot worse in a format where your other restricted will probably want to Terra as well. Uh, for a lot of these other options, like for example Zamazenta, you can give up Matera on that, but still be kind of fine. You don't need it to survive, since Zamazenta's typing is still pretty decent. Calyrex, you can tear that pretty freely, but you don't have to because it still is a it still is a Calyrex at the end of the day. You're still clicking dual stab and you're kind of just winning a game. Uh, Maridon, it loves Terra, but it really doesn't need to Terra to still be an obnoxious Pokemon. But with Tarapagos, you're kind of just not bringing a good Pokemon if you don't tear it. You can get away with not tearing it, to be fair, in a game where you can preserve the Terra for later on, since Terra Shell is still a good ability. But it can't really be a good restricted if you just have no freedom to tear it. And it takes away any actual mind game to tear next to another Pokemon. I guess the best. I'm trying to think of a restricted that you even could maybe partner that with, and I know I said earlier that I probably wouldn't pair Zacian with Tarapagos, but unironically I think Zacian or Zamazenta probably might be the best pick because they both really don't need to Terra to be good. Or maybe like Kyogre, I guess. But I mean, Kyogre gets really boned by Tarapagos, so I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, I don't know. I definitely think we'll see a lot less of it. Uh, some other restricted though, I do think that will pick up a lot. Uh, obviously, I mean, Japan has had a pretty huge bias towards uh, towards Lunala. I think Lunala will pick up a lot as a good wide guard pick. Uh, oh, I just noticed Karadon actually placed like really bad. Like, like Kyogre even placed above, which is kind of funny. Uh, cause I thought that Karadon would actually be a decent pick. Like, even Karadon actually ranked to 28th. So Karadon's best placement was even top 32, which is kind of insane. I really thought Karadon would actually do well in this world. So it was picking up a lot in online tour. Like, the best Karadon team, for example, is this team right here. Which, I think that Karadon ended up on stream with this team, if I remember correctly. Maybe it was a different Karadon team, but... Uh, overall, I mean, this is still a really cool team. Obviously, it's Flame Charge, Terra Fire, Karadon. Uh, has Corner Pond, which is really good for opposing fire types that would have used the sun. You have a Covert Cook Chi, which is decent, and Booster Speed Flutter Main. Uh, that can also reset its own sunny day, which is pretty cool, because typically you just need the top three moves on these types of Flutter Mains. So having the option to reset your weather to still keep Karadon going is nice, because especially after an Icy Wind, or even just before an Icy Wind, to be honest, since you are Booster Energy, you're probably one of the fastest Pokemon unless your opponent's playing Tailwind. So I think it seems really cool overall. There's definitely a lot of merit in just running, I guess, like these six together. You can, and it's clear to see, I mean, Karadon still made it pretty far into the tournament. Uh, but I'm just kind of shocked that its best placement was 38th. I mean, to be fair, this is one of the harder worlds overall. There were so many people playing, so and it's such a wide format at that. So like, I can kind of get why, you know, th there's got to be some surprise picks that are making it. Uh, Lunala's best placement was Brian Collins. Shockingly, not a Japanese player. I really thought that someone from Japan would take home the best Lunala placement. I know it was typically like a Japanese-based restricted mon. Though, it's not to say it was exclusive to Japan. I just know Japan does bias towards this Pokemon a lot more than the US does. So, I just kind of thought that it would be a Japan player who placed the highest with it. Uh, but the team is really cool. Obviously, we have Okidogi, which is an interesting pick. It was the only Okidogi to make day two. And it got some decent rep. Uh, we have the Life Orb Shifu Rapid, which is a pretty uncommon build for it, but it's still really cool. It has a taunt for anti-trick room, which is nice. And then you have the typical dual stab. Uh, I know that the NTD female is pretty common on Lunala teams, though obviously that could really be a lot of different Pokemon. Uh, the comp overall is interesting. I know with other Lunala, you were seeing things like Raging Bolt and Incin. So to see such a vastly different comp, despite a lot of these Pokemon still being good partners with it, is definitely interesting to say the least, especially since that Lunala doesn't even have a wide guard. So it's kind of just playing like a Dawn Wings typically would have with the Power Herb and just three attacks protect, uh, three attacks protector, three attack Trick Room sets. So it's interesting to see for sure. I really thought this would be more of like a Dawn Wings type of team, but I mean, Lunala still fits really well with Shadow Shield. It is kind of an obnoxious ability with a good defensive Terra on that. Uh... Some other interesting picks that placed really well. I mean, th there's not a lot of other interesting, like, restricteds that made really well. Like, if we go through top 64, a lot of the other restricteds that placed really well are just stuff we've already talked about. There are some interesting Pokemon that just 
did really well overall that should get some spotlight uh which i will go over in a moment i just want to verify yeah the rest of the top 64 restrictor wise at least wasn't good but i do want to give a few highlights to some non-restricted that i think could maybe have some relevance in the format as we go through uh for one ttar actually made a really decent placement uh like, like we have ttar at like 13th i believe that is the highest ttar placement um, but I don't think a lot of people had Titar on their bingo board for like doing really well at Worlds. Uh, Titar obviously has been a kind of more niche pick. But if you look at this team, for example, it's a Focus Ash Titar actually, which is a pretty interesting option on it with Terra Ghost. Uh, obviously, that helps a lot with just avoiding Fake Out. It also just helps a lot with its fighting weakness. Um, with Taunt, it's a good anti trick room for this team. Since well, Zama can perform in Trick Room, uh, options like Landorus and Latios, especially on a Tailwind sort of build, really don't like Trick Room. And while Flutterman can kind of be a good 6 on Trick Room, it doesn't like to play under it for too long. So having the Taunt Titar is a really decent taunter that bullies a lot of different Trick Room comps just because of its bulk and its typing. So definitely a cool option for this team. Uh, puts a little bit less pressure on Zama as well for that side spam matchup, which is cool, especially in tandem with Ruler Boom. You could really bully side spam with that. Uh, there's a lot of different matchups that T-Tar could be really good overall. Also, just for Chain Duke Weather, to be honest. Like, even just Chain Duke Weather and just kind of bullying Pelipper with, like, knockoff if it's going to go for Wide Guard is cool. And if they don't have Tailwind, obviously, you could just... Well, uh, if they don't have Wide Guard and they're running Tailwind, I should say, or, like, Protect and Tailwind, or really whatever they're going for over Wide Guard, you can just rock slide it down. Uh, some other picks that I found that were pretty interesting in the format that did end up making some serious performances. There were a couple other in the day two pool that i want to highlight um that might not have been a lot of your bingo boards uh for one serena i know serena was a pokemon that a lot of people for their anti-priority were just going for a graph though early on a lot of people thought serena would be that pokemon uh it did make a good placement on this particular kyogre team which plays like standard kyogre rain really we see the av kyogre that i talked about earlier being a good presence here and it's a terra ice triple axel wideland set with taunt as the nice anti-trigger mode with taunt also on tornadus i guess in case you're Trick Room Mon isn't really priority blocking here. Uh, so we do have some options at least for that. But overall though, I mean, it's it's just kind of standard Kyogre Rain with Scarf Landorus because you could just take advantage of these hands here and just blow through with your Tailwind set. And you outpace even like Maraud on Tailwind since it does typically run next to Whimsicott. Gives a little bit less reliance to Terra that grass that Kyogre, which is cool. And yeah, I mean, you get some serious likes there at the very least. Uh, some other really cool options at the very least that ended up making some good placements. Uh, if we keep going through, Klefki actually made a few different placements. Uh, it looks like it was the same team for the most part, but this is a cool team built around Tropagos. Uh, essentially, this is probably more meant for things like just, I guess, Clefairy's dual typing of Steel Fairy being pretty good. And Gleam is a decent spread. Uh, it's probably like a little bit better on a team like this. Well, actually, I don't really know why they chose Clefairy, uh, Clefairy specifically over Grim. Um, it's probably got to do with that Steel typing, if I had to guess. I mean, otherwise, you probably would just run Grimmsnarl, to be completely honest, since... Uh, I guess maybe it's just the fact that it's special and just very spread is pretty decent. But overall, I mean, you probably would just run Grim in most cases on Tropicus teams. Uh, but Specs Turtle, as I said, Specs Turtle was decent, but it definitely fell off a bit for Calm Mind in terms of worlds. Uh, we have AV Iron Hands, which is standard. And the Decorate Smeargle, which is decent to give Tropicus and Ogre Pond as well some serious damage. Like, these are offensive monsters that really do benefit from that Decorate Smeargle. And then also, I mean, we see a lot of Terra Grass and things like Hands. Smeargle, obviously, so just you don't really lose to Spore Moongus. Since, especially a good Terra to Moongus could put some serious pressure on this outside of Tropicos. Uh, pretty interesting team for sure. Uh, some other cool picks that ended up making it pretty far. Um, there's like one or two other Pokemon I really do want to highlight in terms of the day two usage. Uh, we do see the one Zachary Thornburg team. Uh, this has made a couple other placements at other events. Uh, so it's not exactly like unique to Worlds to be fair. But it's a team that at the very least like Screamtail and Talonflame and Pow have been common picks on Thornburg Samoset teams. Uh, the Dina and Grimmsnarl, I believe, are both new, but at the very least, the other four have been run at a couple other teams that he has ran at other events, at least. Uh, but it's still a cool team overall. I, I've actually uh, tried other versions which had, like, really Boom on it, for example, and I liked it a lot. Uh, and it, it's something, at the very least, like, those four have been on a lot of his other teams this season. Um, but... Uh, one one other one that I did want to highlight uh, before going to the other, like, just under Day 2 picks uh, was this Altaria team. Uh, this is something that I was actually shown, and this is how I learned that the teams were already out on Top Cut Explorer, was the Altaria. Um, it's a really cool pick, to be honest. It's great at weather mitigating, obviously, and its typing is really strong overall defensively. I mean, Dragon Flying is a cool typing in a format like this. Uh, Sing is just nice disruption, too, and having things like the Gravity Sableye next to Price of Blades Groudon helps a lot. Terra Fire on Groudon is pretty common just to avoid burns, and with the Substitute as well, you could still put up some serious pressure against things like Spore, Defensive Terra, Amoongus. 
Uh, the Shiyu benefits a lot from Sun being up and having the Scarf on Shiyu, especially on a team that's not Karadon, is really important, especially since this team does not have Tailwind. And the Fluttermane in particular ends up being a Specs Fluttermane here, which, while it can Icy Wind, I mean, I guess Altaria could Tailwind to be fair, but I mean, you still have to bring Altaria to a game for that to matter. And Altaria does have some serious anti synergy with you if you want to get the Sun Boost. So you probably need to like Tailwind and then just go for some other support and then bring in Shiyu Karadon to make that line work. Or like uh, Altaria Fluttermane can maybe make that work and then just go for the like, Gleam plus Tailwind into like a Heat Wave. Or even just protect on ground and then double out. Like, there are some options at the very least. It's great into the anti rain. Uh, it's also good to just mitigate other opposing weathers if they have a weather advantage on you. Uh, but it's probably more, I guess, for like ignoring the fact that you won't die to Karide on a fight, I guess, or probably more so for Kyogre line because Kyogre line with the team is kind of grim. Even if you were to run the other five, like that Kyogre line is abysmal no matter what six you throw on this. So I do kind of vibe with the Altaria for sure to just kind of mitigate Kyogre's pressure. And then you could definitely at least like turn it to sleep i guess with sing you could roost on it to be fair if they're just running like the ice beam origin pulse because at that point i mean you're gonna be pretty bulky and you're also ignoring kyogre's water boost uh and then if they do go for terra grass is a nice way to just like resist precipice blades or just resist Maridon. I, I to be fair i probably wouldn't be Maridon to be since you are running Groudon. but at the very least for precipice blades resistance then you can just hurricane it for super effective which is kind of cool and then also you have options like Chi, which do a lot more damage now that they have burned Terra for your Groudon at the very least. So it does put some serious pressure on Kyogre's defensive Terras. And meanwhile, if it doesn't defensive Terra, you have Precipice Blades for serious damage. You also have Dark Pulse for serious damage. Uh, Fluttermane Moonblast would probably still do some good damage. Uh, and then the Sableye and Indeedee are probably more of the common supports here with Indeedee just being nice anti-priority. It also weakens Rudely Boom's damage output, so you have a little less reliance on Terra Groudon, and it helps Fluttermane's survivability, but also the Sableye is just nice again for the gravity. Uh, Skill Swap will help you reset weather too, which is nice, uh, and Fake Out is just good if you don't have Psychic Terrain up. Uh, so this was a really cool team that ended up making Day 2. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really cool. Uh, but there are some other teams that I want to go over really quickly that didn't necessarily make the top cut um but they were cool picks nonetheless um the first one that i do want to mention obviously i mean we do have uh seijun park's team with pajirisu uh seijun park added again with pajirisu 10th anniversary uh but i think i mentioned this in a couple other videos or at least i mentioned it on stream if pajirisu was ever to make another good worlds run it was in this format it's a great partner with Mirai on the very least or at least it's a it has good synergy with Mirai on i should say um with follow me and full absorb the one thing that kind of confused me about this team was the fact that Sajun did opt for the Terra Fairy Maradon. Uh, if you look at this team, this screams a team that would run Discharge Maradon with like a good ground type like Blood Moon or Saluna. Uh, but I can kind of get the, the idea of not running that to be fair. I mean, Rapid is just such a good mod and that would have typically been the thing they would have dropped here. Uh, and especially since they aren't running Tailwind on this team either, you do kind of need that really good fast option and Blood Moon would have probably been a bit slow next to Maradon if you don't have Tailwind at least. So I can kind of get the vision here. Uh, Chiyu is obviously a great damage enabler for Maradon. I think the team kind of cooked. I'm just kind of shocked to see no discharge on this Maradon because that's typically why you run the Pachirisu. Uh, but Full Absorb is still cool, especially with Follow Me, and Super Fang is just a great blanket move into most things with high HP. And especially if you can just shave off like half a Calyrex Ice itself, for example, then Maradon can just kind of cook it even if it's going for defensive Terra, since you can still just go for things like Draco for a pretty nice middle ground and completely eviscerate it. Uh, so there is some serious merit to Pachi. I just think it benefits a lot more from Discharge teams as all, well, but it's still the cool team nonetheless. This is where I mentioned earlier where that low kick Iron Hands was pretty interesting since you do have Maridon obviously as a really good electric type, so you don't have as much of a reliance on Wild Charge as your good damage option. So instead, this team opted for just getting walled by Fluttermane, Goldengo, and Terra Ghost, which is kind of fair since they do have options like Chiyu for the Ghost types. Uh, Maridon also just kind of murders anything that's not a ground type. So... You at least have some serious legs to stand on, pun intended, with their Shiva Rapid. Well, with uh, Iron Hands. Meanwhile, their Shiva Rapid's more just meant to be the water type that happens to have CC in case you can't bring Iron Hands. So it's a bit of a difference, and that's why you can ignore the electric move freely on Iron Hands, but you don't really ignore the fighting type move or fake out pressure that it would provide. As opposed to maybe running like a different fake out mod like Incent or even Really Boom, to be fair, which would, I guess, give conflict of interest type of Marad on. Uh, the EC Frig is pretty standard here. That's like the one standard thing besides the Maradon. And uh, really, that whole right side is pretty standard. Uh, and then even, uh, I guess my head's blocking it a little bit, but the Stellar Terra on Rapid Vu popped up a lot at Worlds. I forgot to mention that earlier. But Rapid Vu ran a lot of Stellar Terra. Uh, other Terras like Ghost, Water, Fire, Grass, Poison. Like, really, you saw the whole spectrum with their Rapid Terras as Worlds. You even saw the SD Rapid Vu pop up again, which for some reason really only pops up at Worlds. I don't know why that's the case, but it's only Worlds in Gen 9. It's the only time you see SD Rapid Foo, but it pops up both years, I guess. Uh, we'll see it next year, too. 
don't worry. But we will not see it win a regional. It's just only a Worlds. Uh, I guess it's probably just playing field. There were uh, two other mods that I did want to highlight that ended up going 5-3. and three. Uh, For one, I'm going to go over the one that's a lot less funny, I'm sure. Um, all right, I'm trying to control F for Iron Treads. Um, let's see. So, Gabriel Agati. This is one of the few teams that I noticed did run Iron Treads. Uh, Iron Treads is a pretty cool mod. I was rooting for this one on stream. Uh, I saw it went out on stream, and I was like, yeah, that's my Iron Treads right there. Bandit Treads. Got a nice key flinched. Uh, really cool pick, obviously. I mean, it benefits a lot from Maradon because it's great at just getting a really high steeled move that you can guarantee have terrain for. Uh, and you could kind of just use this as a nice nuke, to be fair, into any sort of Terra Fairies that would wall your Draco. Uh, a team like this would probably be banking more on using Iron Treads as the anti-Draco Meteor pick, since that's typically how you would tear it around the Maradon, or I guess if you're running the Terra Ground as the Maradon check, you do still have other things. I mean, I guess for Terra Ground, to be fair, this team doesn't have a lot for it, but there's just a lot of mods that would just blanket damage most of the mods that would run Terra Ground. Things like Urshifu, Iron Hands, Incin are really good for that, even for Rig, to be fair. So... There's some serious work to be done with this team. Obviously, just offensively, you could really nail a lot of opponents because of how high damage Urshifu, Iron Treads, Moradon are. You still have Incent as a decent pivot here. Uh, they did opt for U-Turn, essentially just running AV and Sonora with Rocky Helmet. My guess is that's for anti-clear amulet because clear amulet was a pretty um, uh, popular item and U-Turn just doesn't really fear that. So it's a pretty good reason, I guess, to run U-Turn. Uh, though it's literally just AV Incent without the AV, which is kind of cool. And then uh, there is one other Pokemon that I do want to quickly highlight. I know this bit's getting a bit long, uh, but there is one other Pokemon that uh, it might even make thumbnail depending on which ABC thumbnail you find. It was another five and three team. I just need to find specifically which one it was. Oh yeah, Skeletor is another cool pick. Uh, though I, I personally had a lot more faith in it. Here we go. Here we go. So this is the last thing I want to go over really quickly. Um, because Scraggy, if you if you look through the link that I'm posting down below, uh, you can find a lot of other cool teams that made day two or top, just barely missed day two, obviously. But I do want to highlight the Scraggy because it is probably the one pick that I had to ask why people ran Scraggy. I literally, I DM Bird before I asked about Terra Bug Iron Hands and it was the only other thing I asked about was why Scraggy. And it's a pretty interesting mod. I mean, if you look at Scraggy, obviously it's Dark Fighting, so it has a decent matchup into Shadow Rider. Uh, coaching Support as well as Fake Out, that objectively is a really cool pick next to Ice Rider. The big reason though that you run Scraggy is, well, okay, there's two reasons. One, with a Violate and the Dark Typing, you actually get some serious merit into like defensive calcing for Shadow Rider that it's probably not super prepared for. And with Terra Poison, you still do get some serious merit into opposing fighting types that might put some pressure on you. With the opponents not really ever daring to click a Psychic type move, fearing that you're going to Terra, because why would you make that call if you're just going to deal zero damage? Uh, but there are some serious things that Scraggy does offer. One, Endeavor. It's a low HP mon, so you're going to get some really strong Endeavors off. Uh, two, it's also slower than Ice Rider, and it's one of the few coaching Pokemon that has a decent defensive typing for the format that can underpace Ice Rider, which is cool since you do get coaching off, and then your Ice Rider can get off a strong Glacial Lance at plus one. Uh, besides like priority options like Pranks or Riolu, it's one of the few ways you can actually do this, which is nice, since even if Trick Room is up, you will still guarantee that that coaching goes off first. Uh, but on top of that as well, Foul Play, you can underpace opposing Ice Riders for the mirror and then Foul Play them after they've already farmed a KO, which is nice. Uh, this team has some other cool picks, like obviously Ogre Pond Wellspring. Wasn't the most common Ogre Pond form in this tournament in particular, but it was decent on this team as a nice just water type pick. Uh, we have the Scarf Landers, which again, there were some more Scarf Landers that popped up here as opposed to other tournaments, but this was really like the way to run Lando I, and it gives the team a really good fast mode since otherwise this is a very slow team outside of, I guess, Ogre Pond Wellspring. Uh, so there were some serious other cool picks here, but again, the Scraggy is kind of the highlight. Like that's that's what this player is going to be remembered for. This is uh, Logan Presley's team. It went five and three. Literally got to win it in. Like super cool team. Again, so many other cool teams though. Uh, but this video has already been so obnoxiously long. I don't want to make this like an hour and a half of going through worlds. Uh, but overall though, again, hopefully you guys found this world to be interesting. I had a lot of fun watching this worlds. Uh, it was really cool to also just again pre-research this worlds, which I I did it through a lot of the talent BGC videos. So I'm gonna link their stuff down below. Uh, really great way to get informed, I guess, for just any informative VGC content. And it's really like, it's probably the best really analytical content I've found. It's like really nitty gritty on what the format is like at that current set. Uh, so highly recommend you checking that out, especially if you're looking to get into like Reg H. They do a lot of interesting Reg H stuff as well. Uh, but if you enjoy and want to see more content, I guess, going over like more tournament play, I could do that in the future. Let me know down below if you want to see it. Uh, also just consider subscribing and becoming a member, uh, members, especially if you want to get some extra mileage, I guess, with things like emotes, and it's a great way to support the channel monetarily. Shout out to our current members, Josh Gilch player and Zeke Zero, who are both supporters of the channel. Really appreciate it. 
And with that said, I'll see you guys next week where we're going to go back to the regular, like typical, just short form ish edited content. Uh, we have a video buffing the Eevees finally going up, which will be really cool. And with that said, I will see you guys later until then. Peace out guys.